Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, this is going to be brief. Before I get into it, um, say praise and glory belongs to Allah, the eternal absolute, who created all things, um, who guides us in our hearts and understanding, and who gives us the comprehension, fiqh, that we need. Um, praise and glory belongs to Allah, the eternal absolute, who is Al-Alim, Al-Hadi, the knowledgeable, the guide, Al-Shahid, the witness, and um, inshallah, he puts that inside our hearts so that we understand things correctly and things of, of that nature. Uh, may Allah give you much health. Uh, if you are not healthy, and may he also um, continue in health if you're not, uh, continue you in health if you are healthy, and give us wisdom and understanding without having to us to uh, lose our health. So this is just going to be brief. I can't see comments or nothing like that. Um, so basically, as you know, I've been saying that the history about, you know, Sunnah, what it is, and uh, Hadith books are not automatically Sunnah, and um, Islam is not, you know, automatically uh, put to five pillars or restricted to five pillars or even five pillars itself, right? Um, and Islam is not even, you know, Hadith books. What? I came. I've, I've been looking at um, for a little bit, and I came up on some things. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to show uh, a video clip of a uh, Sunni scholar, Hanafi, in this case, uh, Mutaridi. Um, so basically, what I'm going to be showing you is also uh, uh, his name, uh, Sheikh Atabek, and also I'll be showing you something from uh, Mind Talk. Uh, mind trap, excuse me, um, and uh, uh, Mufti Abu Laith's uh, series he has on Facebook, and basically it's interviewing all this put together uh, a few Sunni scholars who give the history that Sunnah, the definition of Sunnah, was Hadithified eventually, meaning that it was the Sunnah was turned into basically Hadith books. You know, Sunnah became based on Hadith books. Um, also, that the word Islam became uh, based upon a hadith wherein is narrated that there are five pillars to it. Um, now, the distinction is here is that the original understanding of Islam or the original understanding of a Sunnah uh, is simply just a way of something. Uh, for example, Sunnah can just easily mean uh, the way, the way of something. Um, the way you do something or the way you follow. Islam is simply uh, submission, right? So anything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you to do and you submit to doing that act, that is called Islam to you have submitted, right? So originally Islam, there is no such thing as uh, uh, five pillars Islam. There is no word inside the Quran that says pillars and that there are five Okay, Islam. In Islam, if Allah tells you to do something, then that is an order, that is an amr, that is a command, and so therefore that becomes what they call fard, or mandatory, to do. You see what I'm saying? If you don't do it, then you're not in submission. You see? So, um, that is basically the, the concept of Islam. So, Ibrahim, he never followed, Nabi Ibrahim never followed no five pillars, Right? It just was whatever Allah commanded him to do, and he did it, that is submission. That is Islam to, right? Um, sunnah, which, you, uh, which is way, uh, conduct. And actually, the, the origin of that, that word comes from a root word called sun, which actually means tooth. So you look at the ridges of a tooth, right? And the ridges of a tooth have a certain type of uh, carving, right? Um, so that, that, that means the carving that you have or the... Or, the conduct or something like that, 
that that you have, right? And so they eventually translated that as way, right? Um, so the way or the pattern that you do, or the way or pattern that you follow, right? Uh, if you follow the Quran and the pattern, uh, what the Quran says, that is that becomes your sunnah, that becomes your action, right? So the Quran itself means what? Reading. Uh, some people translate it as reciting, right? But if, when you put that into action, what it tells you to do, that is sunnah. Because sunnah is an act, right? So it's the way you go about doing something. Um, which is Prophet Muhammad's way. And any divine revelation um, that uh, any prophets came with, when they acted upon the commands of Allah, they submitted to him, Islam to, and they followed that way, right? That command. So that became their way. So what we're going to look at, look at this is we are going to, uh, just a few clips. Um, one will be in the messenger, and I will also put some links to the actual video, inshallah, when I get a chance. And the other one will be uh, on the YouTube titled uh, by Sheikh at the back. Um, what are the five pillars? Um, now, what he's going to do, I'll give you a brief what he's going to talk about so you don't, so you might not uh, understand certain terminology he might use. Um, he's going to bring up the words Hanafi, Maliki, Shafi, Muhadithin, um, and um, uh, Muturidi. So, real quick, I'll explain what that is. Muturidi was a uh, theology school, a certain way of understanding uh, about Allah, uh, where Allah is at. Um, and the concept of uh, if the, what the book of Allah uh, is looked upon, whether it's created or not created, or is it the speech of Allah, or like that. So there was a group called Muturidi who evolved, who came about, who had a certain type of perspective or aspect of those subjects. All right. So when you hear the word Muturidi, it's talking about a theology school, um, a theological approach. Uh, when you hear the words Maliki, Shafi, Hanbali, those are different Sunni, what they want to term fixed schools, which means how to implement Islamic law, uh, basically their opinions on how to do that, and it was named after certain people, for example, Imam Malik, Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, and Imam Abu Hanifa. Now, the Hanafis, which get the name after the, after Abu Hanifa, is one of the earliest, earliest of Sunni schools, along with... Uh, the Maliki. Okay, so you're going to hear him say that there was a hadith that uh, the Shafis, which is another school, and the Hanbalis, I believe, they started to narrate a hadith that said that there was five pillars of Islam, Salat, Zakat, Ramadan, Hajj. Most of us, when we become Muslim, if we go to the Sunni strand, that's what we hear. Islam is Salat, Zakat, Ramadan, Hajj, and belief in the oneness of Allah. Those are the pillars. Um... The Quran itself never calls any of that a pillar. It, you know, the Quran itself tells you to believe whatever is revealed, right? And it tells you to submit to the command of Allah. So that would be Iman, faith, and that would be Islam, right? Uh, commands that Allah tell you you got to do, then that is called far, mandatory, obligatory, what you got to do. So Salat, in this instance, if the Quran mentions Salat, that's just a far. Right? It's obligatory. A zakat, if it's mentioned and you're told to do it, that is a farz. Right? So there is no such thing as a, a pillar per se. You see? Limited to five specific pillars. That's what makes Islam. So what he's going to be going over is how uh, Sheikh Adabek is going to be going over basically how in early days of Islam, uh, certain schools started pushing this five uh, pillar hadith and that and that hadith spread and it became what they call sahih authentic and it became known as what islam is okay uh the other clips i'll show uh from mufti uh abu late uh is their brief clips uh but it is talking about basically the history of imam shafi and how he is the one, the main one who pushed for the hadithification of the word Sunnah. So that eventually, when you say Sunnah, it means hadith books. Okay? So, uh, I'm going to take it over here real quick and start it off, inshallah, and 
Then after that, I'll just be, be done because this was supposed to be brief. Oh, the point of me showing this is just to uh, confirm that when the Quran says Sunnah, and it refers to the Sunnahs of those who came before, meaning the Sunnahs of the prophets and messengers, meaning what they did according to uh, the commands of Allah, what Allah gave in His commands, and they submitted to that, right? Um, that those things was given to the prophet in the Quran, and that was his sunnah, right? Um, not the hadith books, who are uh, by people who decide to write down things for themselves, or people mix falsehoods with them, but we know uh, there's no ayat inside the book of Allah that tells us we have to follow other books along with Kitabul Allah, right? So, you're going to see uh, this shape these people uh, explain that history from the perspective of what they're coming from so that you may understand that it's not Islam is not enclosed in what people have been telling you that it is but in actuality it is something that just simply evolved over the course of time that you have to follow hadith books and calling it sunnah and that Islam is based upon five pillars which you know the Shias don't have five pillars per se uh, the Shia group, the sect, don't have that. They don't say that there's five pillars. Um, and other groups didn't in early uh, history did not say that. But that hadith came from certain groups and it became the dominant viewpoint among the Muslims. Okay. So, we're going to take a look at this. Alright, so the first one, you can watch the full video that's uh, Sheikh Atabek. And he will be explaining, inshallah, you can hear it. And we will begin. Islam has two definitions. One definition that Hanafis, early Hanafis and early Maturidis believe. And obviously I follow that school of thought. I am Maturidi, but early one. I follow the early uh, Maturidi uh, position as well as early Hanafi position. Uh, the second uh, opinion belongs to the Hanbalis, Malikis, and Shafi'is, and the latest Hanafis. All of them fall on one side, and early Hanafis and early Maturidis on the other side. Uh, as well as the Muhaddisin, the narrators, and the experts of narration of the Ahadith are also with four Malhabs. So accordingly, to the opinion of four Malhabs, as well as Muhammadin, Islam is believing in one God and believing in Prophet Muhammad and all of the prophets, all of the angels and all of the books of God, Torah, uh, Gospels and all of them. So that is thing. And also praying five times a day, fasting once a year and paying zakat if you have enough amount of money and going and performing pilgrimage one day in a lifetime if you have enough money so that's what islam is accordingly to the majority but uh, early hanafis as well as the early maturidis they said that is not islam did you say majority is that more like 55 60 percent or more like 90 percent over 90 percent over 90 i would say over 95 percent of the muslims okay so then, um, because contemporary Hanafis, as well as contemporary Maturidis, if there is any, all of them follow what I said. Okay, so Islam is them five things. Okay, but we follow slightly different opinion. It is those five things, or are those five things a... That what Islam is. Right. Okay, so they may say something different, but actually they believe that that's what Islam is. Okay, uh, because uh, uh, in that hadith of Jibrail that they use, Jibrail a.s. asks Prophet Muhammad, saying, Mal Islam, what is Islam? And Prophet Muhammad said, Al Islam, Islam is following five things. It means that what Islam is, the ritual meaning of the hadith. So, subconsciously, those people believe that that's what Islam is. They may say many other things. Okay, but we disagree with them. Maturidis, uh, Uri Maturidis, and Uri, we say Islam is. Uh, submission to God, submission to God, and according to our madhab, 
uh, believe Iman and Islam are two sides of the same page. Two sides of the same page. So if no Islam, no Iman either. No Iman, no Islam either. Because one cannot exist without the other side. Okay. okay. Or is Islam spiritual establishment? For example, some uh, sects of Buddhism, they do not have nothing to do with the practical or academical thing, but everything is spiritual. Okay, or the people, uh, what is it? Is it a philosophy? Or is it some... Uh, okay, so... So in the first one... Um, there was a part. Hold on. Let me see if I get a part where he literally mentions five pillars just to, uh, to see. Yeah. Had it set on there. Must have so gotten. That is a spiritual establishment. Okay. So, question for a practical establishment, or it, you can say um, a reforming style of one of. Mm. So I say. Islam has two definitions. So I say. Okay. Islam has two. So I say. So I say. Let me so switch this back around. Islam, Islam has two definitions. Okay. So I say. So I say. So I say. That Hanafis. So I say. Islam has two definitions. One definition that Hanafis, early Hanafis and early Maturidis believe. And obviously I follow that school of thought. I am Maturidi, but early one. I follow the early uh, Maturidi uh, position as well as early Hanafi position. Or uh, the second uh, opinion belongs to the Hanbalis, Malikis, Shafi'is and the latest Hanafis. All of them fall on one side and early Hanafis and early Maturidis on the other side. Uh, as well as the Muhaddithin, the narrators, and the experts of narration of the Ahadith are also with four Malhabs. So accordingly, to the opinion of four Malhabs, as well as Muhaddithin, Islam is believing in one God, and believing in Prophet Muhammad, and all of the Prophets, all of the angels, and all of the books of God, Torah, so, basically, if you if you want to basically get the gist of what he's saying, they believe in the five pillars. So, uh, originally, according to him, the the uh, uh, the original Hanafis, uh, Muturidis, they did not see Islam in the they did not take a Hadithi understanding of Islam as far as there is five pillars to Islam, but that. Uh, in this, and you can watch the whole video for yourself. I'm not going to play the whole video. But uh, if you go, you'll, you'll see everything he has to say on that subject. I just wanted to direct you there. Uh, so basically, he's just pointing out. Basically, the viewpoint I've been stating is that, you know, Islam basically means submission. Anytime a prophet comes and Allah reveals to them to do a certain thing, they are to submit to that thing that Allah has uh, told them to do. And that is Islam. If you do not submit to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, then the moment you're not submitting, then you're not in submission. You see? So, uh, and of course, you know, Tawbah means to turn back. Um, now, if a person has fear of Allah, yaksha, fear and hope of Allah, uh, they're just a person who's out there that's reflected on the creation of the heavens and earth, and they come to the understanding of that there is only one God, you know, so there's only one deity to be worshipped, okay, that is a, a issue of having, you know, basically a form of faith, a belief, right? But actually submission to the commands of what Allah tells you to do, that's a slump to, submitting, whatever he tells you to do, right? Um, but what has happened is that uh, over a course of time, uh, especially you, if you go look at this fuller video, he gets into it a little bit more in depth. Um, this hadith became spread around, uh, and eventually the Muslims, the, diff the different groups, particularly the the Hanbalis, Hanbali group of Sunnis, um, which are really, really, really 
were the main ones who really pushed hardcore for hadiths and hadith books to become known as Sunnah, right? Um, as well as Imam Shafi from the Shafi school. So that's the concept that came about. So that so basically, the the, the what you see nowadays, Muslim saying that they go there's five pillars of Islam is something that evolved over a course of time. So that's not saying, though, whatever Allah tells you in the Quran what to do, that you don't do it. That's not saying that. For example, Allah says do salat, but you're supposed to do salat. You know, Allah tells you to do zakat, you're supposed to do zakat. You see what I'm saying? So it's not saying that there, there is no salat. It's not saying that there is no zakat. It's not saying that at all. But what it is saying is you don't confine Islam to five specific pillars. You see? There is no pillars for Islam. Islam simply is submitting to whatever Allah tells you to do. You see? Um, but in order to get people trapped into hadith books, then they made a thing where, hey, Islam is restricted to five pillars, and these pillars are spoken of in where? The hadith books. So therefore, you're bound by what? Hadith. The hadithification of Islam itself. Right? Um, so that's just one, one, uh, scholar, he's a, a Sunni, a Hanafi, um, he himself does not accept that there is five pillars of Islam, he goes by an older Hanafi concept, um, inside the video he also lets you know that the later Hanafis, so there's a split in the Hanafis now, um, for a while actually, that do go by that there's five pillars, but they, they had become influenced by the other Sunni schools, and have become, uh, you know, known as, you know, part of the Sunni uh, uh, schools, right? Um, which in early history you'll find out that people like, you know, uh, min, min, even Sufan Athari and many different, you know, uh, early earlier Sunni scholars looked upon Abu Hanifa, the founder of the Hanafi school, as not part of the Orthodox, you know, what they want to call Orthodox. Um, Islam, right? So, without getting too much into that, so I'll go back, I'm going to go to these clips, uh, they're in Messenger, but I'll put the actual link into the, uh, the comments, but this is just parts that I took and I put into a, to room for people who follow Quran alone to, uh, look at, um, so, inshallah, this, again, this will be, uh, from Mufti Abu Laith, uh, Mind Trap. And he is uh, interviewing this one scholar that is talking about the history of um, Imam Shafi and the hadithification of the word Sunnah, right? So, I'll be real quick, inshallah. See if I get this on here. I had this up. Somebody's going slow, going slow. Okay. Okay, so the first clip I'm gonna play is real. Is I mean these are real short. So again, I'll put the link up there, and uh, you can actually go to look at the full thing, which is two hours. But I'll, the only reason why I picked this specific part out is because those were the parts where it talked about it, and then they talk about other stuff. So you would have to sift through the whole video if you get the whole video and look at it, right? Um, but here's the interview. It's on Mountain Trap. And, uh, there we go.
tying the sunnah to the corpus of hadith. Right. Not the letter. Uh, but, but I think that it, uh, Shafi'i and others after him prepared the ground for two things. For this rigid understanding of the sunnah and for the hadithification of the sunnah. You know, of really tying the sunnah to the corpus of hadith. Right. Not the letter. Uh, okay, let's see. One more time. Now explain some. And for the hadithification of the sunnah, you know, of really tying the sunnah to the corpus of hadith, which is extremely problematic, that it become, became sort of a sacred thing that you are not allowed even to, you know, to question in this sunnah. Okay. And for the hadithification so, of the sunnah. So, let me put that down. So, as you heard him say, uh, Imam Shafi was main, basically the main one who tied the concept, tied the concept of Sunnah to Hadith to Hadiths. So basically, it's called Hadithification of the Sunnah, right? Imam Shafi is the founder of the fourth, no, third Sunni school. So he came, you know, way after the time of the Prophet. So here's the thing, though. Discussions, he also mentioned that uh, there was discussions over whether to include the Sahaba as part of the Prophet Sunnah or uh, what they want to call the Prophet Sunnah um, or on the Shia side, Tying the words of those imams to the Sunnah of so called Sunnah Prophet in the Hadith books. So, both on Sunni Shia side, Shafi had a uh, influence of that, and he is the one that basically made the concept Sunnah in, into a uh, Hadith uh, book understanding of, of the Hadith form, uh, Hadith book form. Okay? Meaning he did hadithification of the Sunnah. Meaning that when you say Sunnah, you think of Hadith books. Instead of when you say Sunnah, you think of Quran. Or when you say Sunnah, uh, you don't, excuse me, you don't think of Quran when you say Sunnah. Uh, but Sunnah in itself just means a way or a pattern, uh, conduct. And like I told you, the root word, the root word of the word Sunnah means a tooth. Because of the grooves in the tooth, right? So, uh, as you know, in the Quran alone, our concept of Sunnah is the Sunnah to Allah, the, con the, the conduct that Allah tells us to do, or the way that Allah deals with people, and also, and also, the uh, commands that Allah has given His prophets. That is that prophet's way. That is that prophet's way and conduct. So, uh, it seems like this is blinking off. I hope this is not blinking off and pausing. Um, so, that is the, the way. I just wanted to share with you uh, briefly that uh, the history of the word Sunnah, history of the word Sunnah, and, uh, uh, was not automatically applied to the terms of hadith books, right? So inshallah that I gave you some right there and then I'll go get the links. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.